I would have no Hello, time you now. guys. Hey, Kyra, Hello. welcome. It's good to uh, good good to, good to be back. Sounds like there's a bit of a storm going on. There a is bit. a bit of a storm going on. Um, you've had a little bit of time after your game finished, so I imagine you have already seen the tweets by Magnus. So I mean, I did. I did look at the. Sure. Yeah. I mean, okay. So, so first things first, I haven't actually looked at the tweet and in, in its full length yet. Um, uh, but, but yeah, even when I did my interview on site, um, Ketty did mention that Magus had, had made, um, had made a tweet. I mean, no, we're, we're, we're to start. Okay. This is, we're, we're, we're going to go back to time machine and we're, we're going to just like sort of lay some of the cards out on the table here. So First things first, uh, I'm going to go back to last September and the the incident that occurred in St. Louis. Now, I think it's very important that when I when I talk about this topic, um, there are a lot there's a lot of misinformation. A lot of things have been said about it. You know, there are, there are a lot of things that haven't been known. But, you know, in, in the case of the game with Magnus playing as Hans, um, it was a completely different situation because there were many top players like Fabiano Caruana, Jan Pomeshi and others who um, very clearly had suspicions about Hans's games. Um, and that's besides the fact that Daniel Naroditsky complained to me over a year prior to that game as well. So um, many people had um, some suspicions where they were, they were they were very unsure about Hans's play. Um, so, you know, in, in that situation, and then when you also consider the fact that it seems like multiple players complained before the event even began, I understand kind of the, the reasoning behind how we got to that point with Magnus, um, Magnus in the game that he played against Hans and everything that happened after that. Um, so that's the that's that's the first thing um, that that I, that I want that I want to point out. Hearsay uh, also just because I'm going to be very careful with the, with the with the chat people are people are saying uh, you know as far as Daniel or other things like I, I have some of this in writing so I'm not really I'm not making this up. Um, we, we don't need to uh, we, we don't need to rehash it. But at any rate, it is what it is, and so it's understandable how we got to that point. Um, but that being said, in terms of today's game, like I, I understand that Magus lost the game, and yes, his opponent was wearing a watch. Um, but unlike the, unlike the events in St. Louis uh, over a year ago now, um, this sort of is it seems really out there because frankly, the, the game looked very normal. Obviously, there there are no no rumors, no stories about his opponent. I I think frankly, none of us even know who uh, none of these none of us even know who uh, Magus' opponent is. If I'm being if I'm being blunt. Um, so to me, it seems like Magus could have just very quietly said something to the organizers about about like wearing a watch or something like that. Um, and we wouldn't be where we are right now. Uh, but I don't I don't really understand the purpose for a couple of reasons. First of all, it was very clearly a normal game. Secondly, in the game itself, his opponent was completely lost if he didn't go all in and sacrifice the night on F7. Um, third and most importantly, um, this is an event where, I mean, I can say this, like I am getting an appearance fee to play in this tournament. So Magnus very clearly is getting some some form of an appearance fee to play in this event. I think, you know, when you're getting an appearance fee to show up at a tournament, um, you know, if there are certain things that you have an issue with, like I, I understand trying to to bring them up, but to do it in a public manner, like going on going on Twitter slash X and and saying that, um, it's just it, it's somewhat mind boggling because now now also like you, you're getting paid to show up to raise a profile of chess and Qatar and, and everything. And then it, it, now there's going to be a big firestorm around this event for the next couple of days, at least. So uh, I, I'm kind of uh, kind, kind of stunned, to be honest. But the organizers did invite Magnus knowing that he had pulled this in St. Louis, where I assume he was also getting paid to play. Well, no, I mean, in, in St. Louis, the I mean, this there there are only a handful of tournaments that provide appearances where players get paid uh, to play. Most of the events, um, it's it's purely in the prize. And so if you're talking about the Singfield Cup. Um, that is uh, th that was an event where all the all the money was in the prize. Fund. Um, as far okay. as I know, now. I, I could be wrong on that. But, you know, I've never my, my bad, the but there. my bad. But I still think my point stands right the the yeah. organizers of Qatar knew that Magnus had a history of being very concerned about anti-cheating and that he had mm -hmm. forfeited a tournament previously where he did not feel the anti-cheating measures were up to to standard uh and mm -hmm. and yet they invited him so i guess my question is partly um why hasn't the anti-cheating been stricter and how much do you think the organizers have to kind of calculate that, you know, Magnus might be unhappy about our anti-cheating well, standards? 
Well, I mean, I, as far as I know for FIDE specific events like the World Cup, I'll just use that because that's the event that everybody played in recently, um, There or the FIDE Grand Prix, which I also played in. There, there are rules that you're not allowed to wear a watch. doesn't matter whether it's mechanical or electronic. You're, you're just not allowed to wear a watch, period. Um, no, I don't know. Of course, like I, I'm not one of those guys who goes and reads the rule book um, word for word or, you know, stays up to date on that. That's all in the arbiters, obviously. Um, I, I don't know what it was, but if, according to the arbiters, they said that it was mechanical watches were allowed. And uh, I mean, obviously, if they're allowed, they're allowed. Do I think that's right? Objectively, probably not. But again, I don't know why Magnus goes and makes a tweet about it instead of simply saying something to the organizers or to the arbiters. And then, you know, I, like, for example, very easily could have got he could have gone, said something to the chief arbiter. I think Laurent Frey, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it's like from tomorrow, people aren't allowed to wear watches. That's fine. Whatever. It's no big deal. But then Magus goes and tweets, and 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 again, like it, it feel this time, unlike the previous time, feels a lot like um starts to feel a lot like Kramnik actually. So um yeah, it's uh I'm I'm just kind I'm kind of stunned by it, honestly. I'm kind of stunned because like uh, I mean for me at least I've I've had a great time here. It's great to see the fans, all all the enthusiasm, and now you get this bomb dropped dropped on everyone's head, and it's just like at least for the next day or so, everyone's gonna be talking about it nonstop. So I'm can I I don't know just ask you about mm -hmm. the regulations are you guys allowed to bring your own pens or are pens provided honestly i don't know because i'm i was asleep when they had a technical meeting for the first first <laughs> round um so i i mean i don't go there i literally i literally uh, take my phone leave it and i i take my room key and that's all that i have on me um so i i don't know i mean i guess to be fair though to magus because obviously as i said i haven't literally read the tweet so i guess i will um take a look at the exact um um exactly what we see so yeah they're talking about analog watch it seems to be against fide rules um like that that's completely normal but then but but then like magnet's talking of wearing a watch i mean i lost my ability to concentrate like i mean again i i this situation is so much different than what we encountered um what, what we encountered you know last, last september um but it just it seems really weird because like honestly I mean, I, I said, I think I, I said this before. I said this during the interview. There was a, there, there was an event I was at in Poland, the World Rapid and Blitz. And um, during that event, uh, the, very specifically speaking of Hans, um, I saw a game he was playing. I think it was against Boris Gelfand. I'm pretty sure it was the Rapid portion because once I got COVID during the Blitz, I couldn't play. Um, and he was wearing a watch. And it's like, yeah, I mean, people could have made a big deal about it back then even. But it's it's just one of those things that seems so minor that, I mean, you, you, I mean, you don't really go out here to out of your way to say it and i mean also to see magnus saying that he lost the ability to concentrate i mean that just sounds like an excuse if i'm being honest but i i don't know why magnus needs to make an excuse like he's accomplished everything in the world of chess and in this game today he forces the opponent to sack the knight on f7 if he doesn't play knight he takes f7 i think he's just much worse if not lost so i just find it very very bizarre like he can make a point but then um yeah to, to go even further with that it just i don't know see it seems really wild to me it seems really wild i just i, I don't understand it at all we briefly discussed uh, the possibility that Magnus might not continue the tournament the way he did uh, in the Singfield Cup last year. Do you think that is a possibility? I mean, I'd be I'd be very surprised if that if that happened. Honestly, I mean, again, I I don't know. Like, I don't know what Magnus wants. Like, I I, I do see all the tweets. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I do see all the tweets now. Um, but I I don't know. I don't know what he wants because again, like this is this is a tournament, and um, I mean. Like, is it very specifically that he's, he's saying that, like, people can cheat? I mean, is that is that what he's saying? Like, again, you never really know between between the innuendo. And certainly in this case, unlike the previous one, like, I, I think everyone, no, nobody really knows what Magnus is thinking specifically. Um, but I, I feel like they, they already they, they already um, improved things from the first day when, like, there were actually a lot of people who like fans even who were allowed. Um, but I, I just I don't know. It just feels like something that should have been handled quietly. And I mean. For, for his opponent, I feel really quite bad because I mean he's playing this like this very uh, what I, at least based on the outward outward expression he's playing a guy who looks like pretty timid, just a twenty five hundred guy, just playing this tournament, just you know, and and he has easily the biggest win of his career, and and so I do feel feel very bad that it's like instead of being able to probably like celebrate the victory now you now you have this, um, but I mean again like. It, 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 but I, I don't understand what Magus is saying. I mean, because it, essentially, is he say, like, is he saying that cheating is happening in tournaments? Is that what he's saying? Um, I, I don't really understand. Um, Actually, what, what, what's going would, on. And, and, mm -hmm. just about the point you made about it taking away from Alisher's accomplishment, there's a tweet uh, on the screen right now by MVL, who uh, is mm -hmm. also sharing his opinion. So, yeah, maybe I you can see it. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely agree. The stake players in the unite get anti-cheating measures in place at every turn to hinder cheaters, obviously, and avoid people doubting. Yeah, I mean, I, I can understand that. Again, this is a term that this just come back. There obviously are. Uh, how, how do I put this politically correctly? There's there's some people who are pretty important who show up, and um, like, I mean, if, if, if you want if you want to tell 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 like the shakes to not come here, or people who are in the ministry not to come here, or you want no phones at all, then I mean, frankly, I, I think the idea of getting sponsors or or things like that is going to go down the drain. Uh, I'm just going to be really brutal, brutally blunt about it. Um, well, so mm -hmm. yeah, like, like, I, yes, I yes. I mean, there's some people. There's some people who are sitting there. There's some people who obviously are like ministry or people who are sitting there. There, there were a couple chairs out for them to sit. And and yes, I mean, I, I think they had. Their, I think they had their phones on them. Again, I mean, are are they going to help a player cheat? No, of course not. O obviously not. So. Um, and yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I missed something because I was focused on my game. But to me, like, I mean, if you have camera people, camera people, for example, having phones, I think that should always be allowed. I don't really know how you can block them because they need to have internet connection and, and, and everything else. Um, so I, I just, I don't know who who he's referring to exactly because today, unlike yesterday, very clear that there were not, um, there were not just random fans on the floor. In fact, they just weren't allowed in, pretty much. So. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know, but to me, like I just I, I it's a real shame. This is a term that's just come back. Like I'm having a great time, I'm enjoying everything about it so far. And now, just like that, we're in the same uh we're we've devolved into you know another discussion about cheating again. And I mean I, I think it bodes very, very poorly for the future of chess, uh, if this is what what's gonna start happening all the time. Hey Karis, should we take a look at your game? <laughs> Well, I mean, I I kind of want to. Can you pull up Magnuson's game? Because that's that's the one that I actually want to. Sure. I just want to make a couple. I just want to make a couple of points about mm -hmm. this. So, um, yeah, just just go back like five moves. Like, I mean, the the point with what Magnus did here is like, okay, so his opponent plays knight b five, right? Okay, not nothing shocking. Knight e eight, you know, absolutely fine. Um, yeah, and then we get uh, I think it was knight g five, right? Knight g five is played here, yeah, and he plays like knight g six, right? Is that what happened? I mean, like. Yeah, and, and here his opponent played e5, which is which is obviously the correct move because you're trying to go over d7 and, and you know create the kebab on the seventh rank. I mean, th this is not exactly rocket science. Or I guess d5, bishop e5 also wins because of queen h7. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I, I I the thing is the opponent had to sack, right? After d5, after d5, queen b3, right? Um, like he played h6, right? Or was it a6? I don't remember which. Or was it no? It was bishop b7. Sorry, that's how he packed knight on g5. And his opponent had to go knight takes f7. Like there's no other move in the position. Like literally, it's the only move you can play. Otherwise, you play knight h3, and you probably just like you just like lose the game. I mean, maybe you don't lose the game. Actually, maybe you're not much worse. I only saw knight f3, which allows takes and bishop f3. But um, but nonetheless, like I mean, you got to go for it. So yeah. And anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's, there's just nothing to say. His opponent, his opponent sacked the knight. The, it worked out. That's life. Whatever. But um, I, I don't. I, I again, I don't understand the need to make some massive issue out of the watch thing. I mean, unless I mean, unless Magus is basically saying that you know, I mean, is he, he he's saying that every turn has to be uniform. You should not. You, you should basically not have. Um, what was I going to say? That, that every turn has to be uniform. The rules have to always be the same. I mean, maybe they should be. Maybe no watch is allowed. Should be the future, but. Uh, if the rules were stated, the players were allowed to have mechanical watches here, then I don't, I mean, I, I don't really, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Hikaru, you already mentioned that you did not attend the technical meeting. And, and yes. personally, I have never really seen Magnus uh, attend uh, a technical mm -hmm. meeting, which is the kind of meeting where rules are discussed and the, the what you are to expect from the tournament um, mm -hmm. Do you think players need to take more responsibility in showing up for these boring uh, kind of? Um, well, I um, mean, to be fair, this is like one of the few that I've skipped, like with like the world. But but I mean, to be very clear, with like the World Cup, uh, they very clearly lay it out. Now, that's what I don't know. Uh, but but honestly, for most events, I do show up to the technical meeting, like for the, like when I play the Grand Chester or other events. Um, but I mean, as far as players need to take responsibility, I mean, yes, people have to speak up and ask the, the obviously the, the pertinent questions um, re regarding the event. You know, I, I would say, actually, though, as, as my hot take for the day, you know, one thing I would say is that I don't think you can cheat with an analog watch. And, and I actually think that banning analog watches is probably the, the single most uh, guaranteed way to, to not have a very obvious sponsor in chess. 
Because honestly, I, I think if watches were allowed, you would see like the Rolexes of the world sponsoring chess 100%. So in my opinion, I think analog watches should not be banned. Because uh, I, I do think you would have watch sponsors, which would be great for chess. Um, but, you know, that, that's just my hot take for, for the day. Um, that, that, that being said, um, I mean, of course, players have to ask these questions and, and deal with it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think the whole thing is just kind of... It, it puts um it casts a uh sort of casts a as a pall or it casts a spell sort of over the um over the whole event now and everyone's kind of just like i mean now everyone's talking about it. it's not i don't know it's it's not good it's not good and, and also like ultimately the problem with this is like as i said the situation last year was completely different from from like from like today and it just I don't know if I didn't know better. I honestly would say it feels like uh feels like Magnus is losing it a little bit because I just I like today I just cannot possibly in any world really understand uh bringing this up what do you think the consequences will be do you think stricter regulations will be implemented what do you think will happen tomorrow i mean i assume the players are they're gonna they're gonna change the rules and players aren't allowed to wear watches at all i assume that's what's gonna happen um it is is my best guess uh you know i mean it is magnus carlson at the end of the day and um he, he is even a, technically he's not the world champion he's easily the most influ influential player um uh most influential player in the world so i assume they're going to make a change to regulations and that's that um but again i mean the, the fact that you, you have this happening it's just it's it's not good it's, it's not good at all um it's not good and i mean again like for me personally i think i, I mean I guess theoretically it's pot. I mean, people are saying you can put something in an analog watch or something. I mean, but, but at the end of the day, if we're just going to devolve into this world where, where, where like if, if something happens and you lose a game, you automatically become suspicious. I think the days of professional chess are, are very, very limited down, down the road. It does feel like a bit of a, a sad day for sure. We yeah. You know, it's, it's like, it's, it, it's like, it's like, as, as someone said something too, it's like, you know, for example, I go to my games, I wear my two rings. Like, so, so theoretically, probably someone could make some argument that there's some way to, to put something in your rings even. I mean, there comes a point at which it's just like, it's starting to go like too far. It's just really starting to go too far. Um, so I, just, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know where we're going, but it's, you know, after I won my game, I'm thinking, okay, I won a nice game, two out of two. We have the shock loss from Magnus, but life goes on. And then, then of course, uh, I see the tweets and now we, we, we end up in a situation where all anybody can talk about is, um, as uh is is like you know anti-cheating measures and it's not um it's not it's not a good thing yeah i i also feel it's just very sad that it's taking away from Suleimanov's accomplishment who today i think clearly played the game of mm -hmm. his life we were discussing this during the and uh, the broadcast, this probably is him peaking. It's going to be very hard to top that accomplishment. I mean, well, like I said, like, I, like, like I said, when you, when you, when, when you watch games, you see the demeanor of the players. And I see this guy who's like, I mean, very skinny, very timid. Like, I mean, it's just like a guy who, who's never going to, never going to be like a serious professional player. He's just playing a tournament, trying to get some experience, have fun, play chess. Um, you know, it's easily going to be the best, it's going to be the best, be best game of his life. And now it gets somewhat diminished by, um, by what's happening. And, you know, also, you know, the the, uh, the other thing I was going to say is just from a professional player, being a professional player, I honestly want to say that as far as Magnus goes, um, he more than anybody else has been a player who's been able to, like, um, get rid of the distractions, never, like, show any, like, mental cracks. And it definitely feels like um, it, it feels like the, the whole notion of not being able to concentrate after uh, after seeing his opponent wearing an analog watch is uh, sort of a sign that Magnus is not as um, mentally strong as he once was, because I feel like the Magnus of 2014 have been like, who cares? He, he was wearing an analog watch. Big deal. I'm still just going to beat him. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Why do you think Magnus made it so public because as you said he could have i mean he did say that he talked to the arbiter during the game to to ask about the regulations uh mm -hmm. and he was told analog watches were but i think what you're saying he could have gone to mohammed al mundiaki in the after the game and said look i don't agree with the regulations but he made it very public why do you think um that is I mean, I'm guessing that he, that he just he feels like the the regulations aren't strict enough. But again, as 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 I said, you know, every every event is different. But I feel like an event where you're getting paid to show up and play the tournament, um, it's it's very much in the interest 
of everybody to sort of not try and make that super public. Like, it, you know, it's one thing if like I get annoyed by Fide, they do something I don't like or whatever, you know, it's it's, it's a little bit different. Um, but, you know, again, when you're when you're getting paid to sh- paid to show up, uh, make make us a huge deal out of this instead of just saying something quietly to the organizers. It's, it's just I, it, maybe maybe it's just like very, uh, very unhappy with the game and he's overreacting. I mean, that that is possible as much as, you know, Magnus is better at controlling his emotions than everybody else. There is some chance that he's um, that he's just he's very unhappy and um, he, he wants to make the point. But again, I mean, it's. I, I feel like I feel I feel like there are probably other op, other situations where Magnus could have made this point in the past. I definitely know for myself there there are situations like this where you can you can make the point, but it doesn't have to be the day that you lose that game. Like you can do it quietly another day, for example. Like you see someone doing something, or there's there's a little something that that looks looks suspicious. But I mean, if the day that you lose is that it, that it goes like this, and yeah, I, I don't know, uh, I don't know, and it's like yeah, I mean. You know, the, there were moments during my game yesterday um, where I was worried about my position, but never did I think like, OK, like this person, just because they're 300 points lower rated or something, can they can they possibly be cheating? So, I mean, for the people who think that, like, I'm going to go lose a game to 2500 and, and do that. No shot. No shot at all. Hikaru, will we see you at the technical meeting of the Grand Swiss in Isle of Man? Um. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Honestly, I, I, I mean, I guess, I guess I, I better show up there. Um, I better show up. I mean, if I, if I don't show up, I, I half expect like MVL or, or Fabian or one of them to write some nasty tweet to me that I'm, I'm not being serious about anti cheating. Um, even though I'm the person who got sued over all this. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, probably, probably I will show up. I'm guessing. Um, but who knows? I, to me, what I kind of feel like. I, I feel like the, if the players are going to be so kind of paranoid about cheating, they need mm-hmm. to take a bigger responsibility in terms of uh, reading regulations and also influencing regulations. And speaking of what well, MBL I mean, tweeted. I mean, you can say that, but like, uh, you know, I, I would say that there's only one person who really has that kind of power. And that, of course, is, is Magnus Carlson. He's the only person who can do that. There are plenty of top players who complain about a wide variety who have complained about a wide variety of things over the years. And uh, it hasn't really mattered all that much because Fini just ignores everything that's said, if I'm being if I'm being brutally honest. Um, so, I mean, I, there's only one player who can really possibly effect that change. That, that would be Magnus. But again, when, when Magnus, you know, like with what happens today, I feel like also a little bit of the credibility, a little bit of like there's there's an erosion of the character to some degree with with what we see. So um, I, I don't really know. I don't know where the future goes. I'm sure it'll be a topic that's brought up. I don't know what the delicious or delicious, wow, what the decision um, will ultimately be as, as far as watch. I'm guessing that probably FIDE will just not allow analog watches because in the FIDE specific events, I believe that's already a pretty standard rule. Um, but again, like it's yeah, it's just wild. I was just going to say that I think one of the the things, and I hope I'm not wrong about that, but this uh, the Grand Swiss will be different because it is an official FIDE event, right? FIDE regulations mm-hmm. will apply. Why Qatar Masters is an open tournament. It's a private tournament. And I think private slash open tournaments don't need to follow FIDE regulations, uh, is that is my understanding. So I think that sounds, that's that one sounds of... pretty reasonable. And I think that's but, maybe where some of the, the problems started today, because I think Magnus doesn't play open tournaments so much. And I think some of them, like the Singfield Cup or whatever, I don't know about the Grand Chester, but they might follow FIDE regulations. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I I agree with, I think, MVL and with everyone. Maybe it needs to be more unified, but... Well, yeah. I mean, I've, 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 I mean, now, now you're preaching to the choir. I mean, I've said this many times that, that, you know, the world would be better off if top players got along. But, you know, you have to realize there is also an uh, underlying issue as well, which is, you know, at the end of the day, everyone is in it for themselves. It is purely a competition. Now, it's not to say we don't have a lot of respect for each other, but, you know, the, the, we're always competing. So, like, when, when I play against, you know, Magus, for example, or I play against MVL or Fabiano, I mean, yes, of course, obviously, we're away from the board all. You know, I'll talk to them very casually where we're on very, very good terms. But there's a certain belief that like the players are doing things because it's going to benefit them. So there is very rarely is there the same this kind of unity amongst the absolute top players, uh, because there's always some suspicion that like players want things to, you know, favor them or there's always an ulterior motive instead of just doing what is best for the game. Um, So, you know, it's not not my place, obviously. I I know a lot of people say it is, but, you know, I'll say it as I've said many times, like I am a streamer first. I play turns. I try to be competitive. but 
Um, you know, it's it's all it's all the people who are going to be playing chess. You know, five, ten, fifteen years from now to to figure out what the path forward is. Um, so, like the the top players, they they should get together and agree. But um, you know, there have been t- times. You know, you've had like groups like the PC, and I know this is not related to anti cheating, but you've had like the um, you've had like Intel PC. You've had some of these groups with Kasparov um, where you try to bring all the players together in an association, and they've never really been able to keep it together. So. I'm not saying that like players are the reason for that, but there have been attempts to have like players unions, things of that nature. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, that's going to require the players literally getting together and talking to each other, which I mean, everybody's on good terms, but people don't really talk like that in general. So it, it, it is what it is. Hikaru, you also played a nice game today that has been kind of overshadowed and now mm-hmm. but by everything else. Uh, but should we take a quick look and get your thoughts on yeah, what sure. happened over the board? Yeah. So yeah. So like today, like I, I'm I, I, okay. So like let, let's let's get on the paranoia train. So as usual, I'm playing like one of these Chinese guys who's like rated like 2500. Anytime you play somebody from China, you don't really know are they like are they actually rating? Are they like 2650? Are they are they just like a complete monster? Um, and so I, I just decided to um play play the Italian just to play it very very quiet and and slow game. Um. My opponent came with a setup that I actually was very, very unfamiliar with, or not unfamiliar with, but he came with this idea with this knight h5, knight f4, and then f6, which like really baffled me because I, I swear, like I played the Italian a lot from the black side. I've never seen this idea that he came up with. Um, so uh it was, yeah, it was it was kind of shocking. Um also like because you know what else I realized? Like, you know, one of the great things about chess, modern day chess, is that there, there's some professional players who who are too busy creating courses that everybody can use. So like, I don't actually have to do preparation. And I remember, even though the position was a little bit different, we go back to the bishop on c2. Um, like there's a position very similar to this with, with the bishop on d3 and says c2 from Anish Giri's course on the Italian. Anish basically says this is a dream position for White. White basically, um, White has a dream. You have to go and win the game or something. I mean, I don't remember the exact wording of it, but something like that. And um, and, and so Anish has, has the course and like I looked at his course. It's great that, that Anish is giving away all the secrets to try, try and uh, make make money. Um, but uh, but but yeah, so so I, I I remember that in my head with the Bishop on D3 that that like Anish had said it was great for white. So I thought, OK, like this, this, this should just be good once I get the same position with the Bishop on C2. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, I mean, somehow here I couldn't figure out if Knight G5 was right or Bishop D3. I just thought Bishop D3 F1 looked like the human approach. Um, Knight F1 was also a move that I did consider, but I, I wasn't wasn't sure. Um, but uh, Wesley is a course too, apparently. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm glad that all these all these pro players are giving away all their secrets for like forty dollars, forty dollars a pop. What can I say? It's uh, it's fantastic. So um, anyway, yeah. So I I mean, I, Knight F1 was a move, but I thought Bishop D3, Bishop F1 just fundamentally made sense. I, I'm actually not sure if it was right because after after we played like F6, somehow I just I wasn't convinced. Like I, I just. Yeah, and then I played King H2, which I thought was the human move to go G3 and kick the horse. And he played Bishop F7. And like I've never seen this idea of putting the knight on E6, but I think it was actually a very, very good idea. Um, very, very good idea. And I think my opponent was completely fine up until they go forward a few more moves. Yeah, I played. A- I, I really a- disliked Bishop B8. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure if if he should do that or not. I mean, I, I thought maybe he could have already played like 96 takes in D5. Um, like I thought 96 here and then taking with well, the idea, say I go G3, for example, like G3 to illustrate takes CD4, D5. I mean, I think black is completely fine already. Um, so yeah, he, he played, um, yeah, he played Bishop D8 and I thought it was still okay up until Queen C2. Yeah. G3 and I played Queen C2. Yeah. Right around here. I thought, oh no, maybe, maybe it's already too late. So he takes, I take with the knight, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. it's too late already, but but I thought basically once I got Rook D1 in and then D5, it was just very, very unpleasant. Yeah, I, I really like Queen C2, and part of the reason why I thought moving the bishop back was so bad is because he loses all these uh, opportunities mm-hmm. to, to change the pawn structure. Yeah, so again, like I, I felt like once I got Rook D1 and D5, it was just very thematic. I think I misplayed a little bit later on. I mean... I think it was probably always winning here, but I, I feel like I misplayed it a little bit. Somewhere around here, yeah, before I liked, I liked all this. I like this. This looked good. Yeah, this looked good. Um, yeah, and I don't know. Somewhere around here after ninety seven, I feel like there's probably a better way to play it. Uh, Queen either is right. Okay. Knight B6 should be six. And then, well, oh, you have so a here was wrong. very nice trick here. Which is? Takes, takes. Oh, I have 96. I have 96 with the, oh, I've got 96. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, uh, I thought that part was of the reason why you missed this is because you were playing quickly because you thought your position was so good anyway. Well, I thought that I was positionally just squeezing him after knight c4, knight takes e3. So I didn't, I, I mean, I mean, I was squeezing him on the board and on the clock, and I just thought that it was very hard for him to play. But you're right, I should have traded and gone knight c4. That's a good point. Well, it's the computer's point, not my. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I still. Yeah, but see, somewhere around here after rook c1, I mean, I was sure that I was just going to win this game before time trial. I'm like, okay, it's going to be a short three hour game. Um, you know, it's going to be a nice day. And then somehow after queen b, queen f8 takes and knight f6, it's like, it gets tricky here. Like, it feels like I should be winning, but I didn't think my conversion was necessarily great. Although maybe it was okay. Um, I gotta admit, Hikaru, we didn't watch too much of your conversion because mm -hmm. we were busy discussing Magnus. Mm -hmm. We yeah. just saw the computer saying Hikaru is absolutely winning, and we assumed it was easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I thought I thought I was going to be done back 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 to the hotel, able to eat dinner pretty quick, pretty early, and um, and then yeah, I had to use some time. Like after I took, he played Rook D8, which was a good move. I, I kind of underestimated. I went Rook C7, which I thought was right. And after King H8, I think there was some easier way to win. Here I play Queen C2. Wow, Queen C2 is best? Wow. Um, wow, Queen C2 is best. Okay, because somehow I felt like there had to be a positional way to, to win this without letting him get any counterplay. But, um, but wow, Queen C2 is right. Okay, so Queen C2, and then he played D5. And wow, Queen C2. Oh, wow. So I'm actually pretty good at chess. Yeah, it wow. was a pair. No, because I, I when he played knight takes e4, like I thought I'm probably I thought I'm probably winning here, but after queen of eight rook f8, I mean it's even material. He's going to move the knight, push the pawns. F2 is weak, and I, I just I felt like I had done something wrong. But um, okay, but I played knight e7, so it shows that I'm not a computer. Okay, because a5 is apparently winning. Fair enough. Oh, only um, the second best move. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but see, because even here, yeah, I mean, it, I was worried about like knight d2. Yeah, I mean, once he goes knight f2 and I, I get this, um, the, the rook for the two pieces, it, it should be good. But I guess ah, I just ignore a5, bishop e6, and there's nothing. Oh, oh there's knight g6. Yikes. Yeah, yikes. That's that's true. Um, yeah, so I mean, maybe, so it actually is very clean, huh? Because I didn't feel like it was I clean thought at it was all. a very good game. Point. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I somehow like looking at this position optically, like I, I know it's winning, but it feels like there should have been a way to win without allowing the situation. But I, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, the rest is after knight two, bishop d5. I mean, yeah, I think it's just very clean, right? Takes knight g6 correctly and then rook c5. And it's just uh, if he can't stop the pawns, right? Yeah, it's just winning here. OK, so actually, it's, it's actually better than I thought it was. Interesting. Um, OK, interesting. Good stuff. I feel like I that's a common game. common thing among the top players that you're very critical of your own play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think you always assume that uh, that you can be better. And, and I think, again, that's at the end of the day. At the end of the day, there there is this player who generally when he's not worried about his opponents wearing analog watches, uh, he tends to be a pretty good player. And so you always feel like whenever you play against Magnus, he is the gold, gold standard. Um, and and because of that, you feel like you have to be super, super precise. So you're always in your mind. That's always what you're trying to do is play the absolute perfect game. So you know if you're playing against like Magus, for example, it wouldn't um it, it wouldn't be good enough. So it's, I think a large part of why like I'm super critical. I think Fabiano definitely is, um, and so forth. And yeah, wear a watch tomorrow. Sorry to everybody who's wondering. I, I didn't I actually didn't bring my Rolex with me. Um I, I obviously I should have, but I didn't I didn't bring a watch with me, so I, I can't wear a watch. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um <laughs> Um, I was just wondering, you know, you're seeing now that actually your conversion was uh, a lot cleaner than maybe you thought at first. Does that ever impact your mood in the evening when you check the game, when you come back to your room and you either played better than you expected or maybe sometimes worse than you expected? Does that, does that have an influence? I mean, I think that only matters if the results, like, for example, say, say I had made like one or two bad moves in the game and gone from a win to a draw. I think it definitely would affect my, my mood. But I think if, if you win the games, you have a positive outcome. I, I don't think it matters all that much um, at the end of the day. Like, I'll be like, I was annoyed for probably like 15, 20 minutes. And now I see this. And now it's just like, OK, apparently I played great. So I think unless you mess up, unless you turn it from like a win into a draw or a loss, generally, it doesn't have it, at least for me, it doesn't have a big, big impact. Um, so not not that much. Tomorrow, uh, the field of perfect score is getting smaller and smaller. Is there someone in such a big field uh, 
Do you have opponents that you feel, oh, I would be interested in playing them or others where you feel, oh, I would like to avoid them? How do you feel? I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe it'd be funny to play the guy that Magnus lost to. <laughs> That's not going to happen, I don't think. But uh, that, that might be kind of kind of funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think in general with the Opens, though, a lot of people who are near the top now are mostly people that I've heard of. Um, so it's uh it's it's i don't think there's gonna be any huge surprise but but at the end of the day um it's it, it more than anything it's just fun to play against play against different opponents i think you know i've i've played i feel like wesley wesley specifically i feel like i've played him god only knows how many times since the pandemic began in um in 2020 but i feel like i played him a million times online and over the board i played him a lot too um so there are certain people that i think that it's uh it's it's not necessarily fun because you play them over and over and over again. Whereas an event like this, you get you get different players. And and also for me, I mean, it's great to see that even though it's been like what like five or six years now since I since I last won Gibraltar, that I can still play decently in open. So I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with with my play overall. And I, I think I've, I'm in a pretty pretty good mood as well. Or I mean, we'll see if I stay in a good mood considering today. But um, I, I've been in pretty good mood. And honestly, I felt like the the organization has been pretty good at this event. I mean, not to like. Not not to like throw Magnus on the bus, but like for me, it's it's been great. I mean, I feel like the people for the most part have been pretty respectful. Um, and uh, it's just yeah, it's a, it's a bummer. It's a bummer to hear this. Definitely a bummer. Okay, well, I think that uh, probably wraps up. Well, I mean, everything. actually, well, can I add can I add one more point? Uh, just just one more point that, that, that I wanted <laughs> wanted to bring up, which you know, one of the one of the dangers when when this happens with Magnus is Magnus is the face of chess. He is the world champion. Um, you know, people can say what they want. You can say Levy with his followers on YouTube can make some change. He has zero impact in the world of professional chess. As I said before, I have zero impact. The only person who has that kind of sway is Magnus, much like Gary Kasparov used to. And, you know, I, I remember if I go back to the late 90s when you had um, when, when you had a uh, like you had IBM and Intel and all, all those guys loving, loving chess and sponsoring many events. And one of the reasons that they actually stopped was they kind of got fed up with chess players being prima donnas. I and mean, they got fed up with Gary and, and some others. And they're just like, OK, we, we don't want to have anything to do with this. And so I think if we sort of fast forward to the world we're in right now. I think when you when you have Magnus, um, Magnus doing this. It, it, it's very easy for sponsors to look at this and they're 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 like i mean why do we want to be involved with chess and i think people do need to keep that in mind um i mean magda specifically when you're looking towards the future because i mean you can turn off a lot of potential sponsors of people who like the game if the per, if the perception of top players is they're just complete paranoid lunatics uh, now i'm not saying that chess players aren't completely top players aren't completely insane because on some level we all are we've, we spent our whole lives on this game um, but still like the, the reflection and the way it's perceived, I mean, it, it can be very damaging when, um, when, when you have Magnus doing this. Cause I, I mean, if I'm a casual fan, like, let's just say, I don't know, let's say I'm a, let's say I'm a local Qatari, you know, uh, if I'm, if I'm a kid and my, my father, for example, is someone prominent, you know, if, if I, if I watch games or I read this news and I see this stuff, it's like, it's very easy to get this perception that like Magnus is just completely insane. And I don't know why anybody would want to be, would, would want their kids to be playing chess or frankly to sponsor chess. If this is if if this is what happens, where it just looks like chess players are completely insane, plain and simple. Yeah, I guess time will tell what happens. Um, first of all, in this tournament, and of course, in the bigger picture, it feels like it's not a very healthy uh, mm -hmm. or happy environment right now. So hopefully, I mean, I, I mean, I, I would hope honestly, I would hope that Magus actually apologizes. Um, uh i i would hope that he does apologize honestly because i just I, I to me it just seems like he got really angry over the game and then turns into this massive issue and i i just i i don't really understand it i don't um i i, I made this point during the broadcast hikaru that i think it's kind of better for this tweet mm -hmm. to have come instantly because then it would be much easier to accept the apology as an overreaction mm -hmm. due to a bad result because it's easier to understand kind of the heat of the moment rather than um, making such a tweet after actually having thought about it and slept on it or or whatever. And right. so do you think an apology here would just make everything OK? I mean, I think probably it would. I mean, I, it's like I mean, it's it's like if Magazor reacts, that's that's like I, I think everyone would understand it. I mean. 
at the end of the day, I, I think, you know, I've said this before about top players, you know, everybody's different. Like all the top players hate losing. They get very angry. Some like myself or Gary in the past, like we sort of wear our heart on our sleeve. We show it very directly. There are other people like Fabiano and Vichy who keep it within themselves and they go until they go back to their rooms. Uh, so I think it's very, very understandable. Um, you know, for players to sort of have that reaction in the heat of the moment to, to, to lose, lose their mind and just be really, really upset. Um, but I, I feel like, yeah, if Magus were to, were, were to just say something like, you know, it, it would all be fine. It would be very understandable. Um, so I would, I would hope that's what he does. And also, I mean, like, just also, I just want to say something else because I saw someone wrote something in chat about, like, you know, if I was asked to take off my rings, would I take them off? I mean, I would be like, you know, hypothetically, if I'm playing in a game and someone asks that, I'd be a little bit miffed if that happens. But of course, I would. And I'm pretty sure that. Like if Magnus directly had a conversation, I mean, you can't talk directly to your opponent, I guess. But like if the arbiter had asked his opponent to take off the block, his opponent would have taken it off and it, it wouldn't have been anything at all. Um, so like, yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, or sorry, you were starting to say something before I cut you off. No, but actually you you I much rather hear what you said, because I actually made this very same point uh, that if Magnus had asked. The guy would have mm -hmm. taken off his his, oh, his watch. I mean, ob obviously he would have. He, of course, he would have. I mean, he he would have. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it would it would not have been an issue at all. Um, but yeah, I just I, I find it. Yeah, it's it, it's just all it's all kind of surprising. And I I think you know it also. Um, you know, you know, speaking of chess and it being being very competitive, I think for those of us who who are chasing Magnus, certainly when when this happens, it, it sort of it makes him look less uh, less like a machine and, and much more human. Like you start to see some of these cracks, and and I remember like uh, if I if I do a comparison to tennis, I, I forget who said this, but during the during the peak, whenever it was um, when when Federer was just like winning every single turn, I feel like there's some some player there's like a player who said something like you know you go into it knowing you're going to lose like psychologically you know you're just going to lose the match every time and i think for a lot of us you, we have this perception of magnus just being this rock stone or rock, rock hard killer just like no emotion just always always at his peak and these things sort of they start to give us a little bit more um more hope and optimism uh when we play against him and show that like maybe that may, you know maybe he's not as invincible as we always assumed he was Yeah, I think very interesting points. I mean, it's such a big discussion, right? We could stay here all night. Well, uh, actually, I'll, I'll give you guys, because someone said something about tattoos. Like, I, now I can see someone who's going to say that basically you could do, I don't know if you guys watch the show Prison Break. Uh, it's an old American TV show, but probably something where, like, you can get tattoos on your body before the game to remember your preparation. So just, like, tattoo your whole your whole chest and go to the bathroom during the game. Like, I mean, <laughs> theoretically, it's possible. Of course, nobody, nobody in their right mind would ever do it, but theoretically, it is possible. Um, so yeah, I just, I hope we get back to the chess. So that's really what I would say. I, I hope we get back, we get back to the chess and, and I mean, it's, we don't, we, we, it doesn't devolve into this, this paranoia, um, which seems to be, you know, unfortunately very, very prevalent at the moment, uh, especially online. Yeah. I think the next couple of days, this is going to be a big topic. We'll see, uh, what happens tomorrow. Are there new regulations? Uh, how is Magnus game going to look like? Uh, will he be able to refine his focus? I mean, I he's, he's going to play. He's, he's going to play a weak player, so I mean, he he should just be able to win very easily. Um, I mean, since he lost, he'll probably play like a twenty four hundred, I would guess. But I don't know. I don't know. Hikaru, any final thoughts before we let you go? Um, not, not specifically. No, I mean, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very pleased with my play. Cause I, I feel like in, in, at least in the last couple of online turns, I just feel like I've been burning out. I haven't really in, enjoyed chess as much. And so just being back at a physical board, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I'm, I'm just very pleased that my results have, have been good so far. And, um, it, it, it actually also feels a lot better playing over the board than playing online. I mean, aside from all the other stuff, it just actually feels really, uh, it feels really nice play, playing over the board. And I've, I've, I, I actually, I think these days, like, I, I think I oddly enough enjoy over the board chess more than I enjoy online. Um, crazy as that is. Interesting stuff. Well, uh, congrats again on the win today. Best of luck for tomorrow. It was a pleasure having you as always and hearing your thoughts, uh, on what was and, certainly mm -hmm. an eventful day in the chess world. Yeah, and also, of course, I'll do a recap on both games, obviously. So, um, so you'll get your recap of both games. I'll try to make sure my cam shows like it is here on Zoom, where it's clear instead of completely blurry. Like, what's my recap? But at any rate, yeah, I'm just glad that all you guys have enjoyed enjoyed the show. And um, I mean, 
I, I do think the rest of the event is going to be be about the tournament, hopefully. Um, but hopefully, I mean, hopefully I can just keep winning and keep playing good chess. And if I do, a lot of good things will happen. Fantastic. Well, best of luck, uh, Hikaru. We'll speak to you tomorrow, I guess. Uh, until then, have a good night and thanks for coming All right. on. See you guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.